everybody it's been a, a while since i updated you guys with the bitcoin and economics around the world geopolitics um i've been busy as you guys some of you guys know that i was on vacation in mexico and it just it takes a while to get back into the game you know um trading is difficult investing is difficult you have to kind of be uh, uh, reading the market's pulse so for me specifically with everything I have going on, it takes about a week to basically uh, get my grip on that uh, on that pulse and see what's going on. As I am a uh, short-term trader, I, I do day trading and sometimes real short-term uh, swing trading on top of my positions and my investing, which is different. It's a different animal all around. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to come up here and um, come on here and uh, update you guys with um, the mainly the the what I saw economic wise uh, in Mexico compared to two years ago and what I see here in the US because I am tapped into everything that's that's going on here because I'm a trader um, I was I was um, looking and um, comparing and a, a lot of the, the things that that I saw was basically that our standard of living course in bigger cities in Mexico and not the rural small towns the the bigger cities are becoming pretty um, equivalent to um, to US cities when it comes to job opportunities um, a standard of living of course some of the areas have poor air quality because of regulations and stuff but because of the same lack of regulations the construction industry the business industry it flows like water, guys. I'm telling you, something that takes five years here to build, um, and that would be a short amount of time. But five years down there, I'm telling you, in one year, uh, the construction is almost finished. Uh, so within the last two years that I've been here in Las Vegas instead of there in Mexico, I've I've seen specifically Guadalajara, Mexico. I've I saw literally. I'm not joking guys like eight to ten new skyscrapers brand new skyscrapers two or three new malls all high-end malls and almost everybody has a newer car uh, it's very rare to see uh, older vehicles in the nicer part of town which was not the case back then you still saw a combination not anymore all, all I don't know if it's because of the uber drivers not having access to newer vehicles because of the job um, but it seems like everybody has at least a 2015 and newer car. I don't know if you can say the same here about the U.S. I know a lot of people are going into a debt to get newer cars, but I still see a lot of older cars around. I myself have older cars. I don't like to have payments. Um, and I like to work on my own cars. So if, um, <laughs> if they go broke, I mean, if, if the cars break or anything goes wrong with them, the newer cars... They're extremely difficult to work on yourself. They're basically robots now. They're not really mechanical uh, mechanical vehicles. They're electronic vehicles. They're everything run by motors and computers. No hydraulics. No mechanics. None of that stuff. <laughs> so it's a lot more expensive and more difficult to maintain a car like that. Why I kind of stay away from buying a newer car. And if I do... It will most likely be a more basic type of car because right now I'm in asset accumulation mode. And as we all know, hopefully you know, vehicles aren't assets, they're liabilities. Um, so, yeah, there's there's an abundance of newer vehicles, construction, business activity going on in Mexico. Um, and, I mean, if I compare it to Las Vegas alone, let's not say the rest of the country, I'm not an expert in the rest of the country. But Las Vegas alone, they have construction. There's there's a business going on here. But even here, being a low uh, tax or no tax, or low regulation state, it's still slow compared to what's going on in Mexico. So, and there's a lot of educated people in Mexico, um, highly educated. So, that's another another thing that I that I noticed that I have I had seen from before. But it just really um, it really like clears things up when I understand that. These people are building buildings in less than a year and 
of course, they're hiring architects, engineers, and they, all these are young people. Um, and they're doing a great job. You know, it's not like it's not like uh, the buildings look out of uh, out of how can I say out of proportion. They don't have um, they don't have. Um, so, yeah, so um, I just, you know, it's a it's a con comparison because I am uh, I do I do tend to uh, invest in the in the Latin American market. I like to use um, as most traders and investors use uh, Mexico as a proxy to uh, the economic health um, short term to medium term of uh, Latin American markets. Besides that, <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to mention was the idea that um, I think Max Kaiser was talking about this, uh, that Argentina and some Chilean uh, communities and specifically Argentina because of the history that they have with uh, the currency collapse and uh, all kinds of uh, monetary issues. Um, it, if you want to see how Bitcoin is being used, how it is being used as a tool to help, if you want to see how it's being used as a tool and how it's helping the people down there, just just look at Venezuela, look at Argentina, look at some Southeast Asian countries that are, even China, even China, for a while they've been using, they were kind of like uh, forward thinking uh, because of the need that they had to take out so much, so much value out of China because of their restrictive policies, monetary restrictive policies. And um, that's it. You don't need a better example than those main big countries. Um a lot of people are still, I think I've mentioned this before, but a lot of people are still confused on how it's going to be used. And I, again, I'm just going to re, re, reinstate that Bitcoin is going to survive because, <laughs> because the idea that all these corrupt nations around the world hate it because they, they it doesn't allow them to continue to be corrupt with the, with the 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 darkness behind that they like they they don't like the light to be shined on them and what they're doing well bitcoin is an open an open ledger that everybody has access to um it can't be printed um it's very hard to confiscate and of course the main issue here is that it transfers value friction almost frictionless a tiny bit of mining uh costs but almost frictionless with the ability to destroy corruption, which is the number one uh, issue with governments. They don't want to be stopped uh, in their corruption schemes. So if you support Bitcoin and you understand Bitcoin, this is basically what you're supporting. You're supporting uh, the, the stopping of corruption, the open ledger, the ability to see what governments are spending on, what you know institutions are spending it on. And the idea that it's an actual money that is not being devalued through printing like fiat. So you can hold it once it reaches its uh, normal use uh, uh, value. So normal use means that it's now adopted. It's now well distributed globally. And the, the value that it's providing is pretty much, um, uh, how can I say, it's pretty much out in, and into the open. Um, like the value of oil, you know, it's pretty much, we understand the value of oil. We understand the value of gold and, uh, different hard assets like <clears throat> commodities. And we know about how much we have to pay for them. So when Bitcoin gets to that point and it gets adopted, you won't even know you're using Bitcoin anymore. It's just going to be everything that you see as your money in the bank, in apps, uh, it's all going to be backed up by some sort of crypto, hopefully Bitcoin and other strong cryptos. But yeah, that's what it's going to be backed by. And you won't even know it, you know. And if they want to get even more complicated, they can back gold. They can back the Bitcoin with gold uh, as a double, a double um, value uh, added to the to the to the holding of Bitcoin. You know, if you want to hold Bitcoin for its own value. And if you want to hold Bitcoin backed by gold, it's almost like you own two things. You own the gold and you own the Bitcoin. You don't necessarily need to uh, to hold both. You just have to have the Bitcoin backed by the gold if that's what you want. 
some people are comfortable with just Bitcoin by itself and its natural strengths. But I don't want to keep rambling on about this. I just wanted to, if if you were still confused, if you needed a little reminder of why why Bitcoin, why the value of Bitcoin, then, you know, there you go.